three to five sets a year, as we've seen in the past, a lot can happen. Serena Williams has a tough one. Yeah, as Serena's got a tough one in that first round with Camilla Georgi in a tough part of the draw. So I think you know one of the things that's so interesting about the Grand Slams, and I just remember as a player and also when I coached, is it's new beginnings here. You know, the beginning of the year, everyone's coming out with new, with new thoughts and new ideas, and you wonder, is this the year? Are the legends uh, going to continue with their pick on the men's side with their dominance, or are the newcomers going to really blossom through? And I think that's one of the things that Australian summer brings all the players. So for me, it's always refreshing to come down here. There's so many great matchups in the first round. Like you said, you know, after last year, as I mentioned on the stage, uh, what Serena and, and Novak did last year was historic. So to see them come back here so quickly, it's always very intriguing for tennis fans. And like I said, when you combine that with the new possibilities, a lot of these new, new young names out there, it's exciting stuff. And can Serena make it seven titles, do you think? I, I would think so. I mean, she's my favorite. I think there's Serena and everybody else. We've seen her win major titles, and we've seen her win major titles last year in particular when she was ill and not playing that well in Paris. So for her to be able to do that, I think, instills kind of a new level of confidence. So as long as she stays injury-free, she's the one to beat on the inside. And you joke on the men's? I, I think Novak on the men's side, um, just because of what he's done last year. One of the things that sticks out uh, in my mind is that last year, the entire year, he didn't get to, to the finals only one time. It was the first week of the year. The rest of the year, every week, he played either one or got the finals. Which to me, is that's why I'm laughing, it's kind of laughable. I mean, he's played great tennis, and to see how he started this year, against uh, Rafa in the finals um, a couple of weeks back in Doha. I think he sent a pretty clear message that he's ready to play. Um, I, you know, it's always so tough to bet against the other top guys. I think style-wise, Roger still has the best game against him. Uh, Roger beat him three times last year, lost five. Uh, they were all finals matches. Um, but Roger's style of play, I think, is the most complex for Novak. Um, I think we saw a couple weeks ago that he matches up right now well with Rafa until Rafa makes an adjustment. And trust me, Rafa will make an adjustment. And uh, you know, Andy also beat Novak last year. So those three guys, although they're the favorites, those are the ones that match up. But I think Roger's game matches up the best with Novak. Is there anyone who has the most surprises? I think we're. I think we have lots of surprises. You heard me mention Jack Sock up there. I, I'm very, very intrigued to see how uh, Bernie and how Nick do. Um, I think there's a lot of expectation on both of them, and they have the skills to do well. The challenge for Bernie and Nick is can they do it um, over five sets for seven matches? And, and that's what we haven't seen yet. We know they can do it for one match, and we know that they can beat anybody on a given day, but can they do it through an entire fortnight? And to do it here with this pressure, that's kind of the next hurdle for them to get over. Yeah, okay. That's a great question about Novak and Roger. Roger only beat him in the two out of three set matches. And to me, it's a style matchup. It shows you that the best defender on the planet is better than the best offensive player on the planet. And, and over five sets, you have to create so many opportunities to succeed that Novak's defensive skills and wherewithal kind of take precedence. And that's really what happened in the three out of five set matches, in my opinion. I think Tomic's draw is an interesting one, and, and the thing about uh, Bernard, which will be very intriguing for me to see, is the number of matches coming in. He did well in, in Brisbane, and you know, beat Kane Shakori for the first time really should give him a lot of confidence. The first time he's beaten Kane, a top 10 player, and he's still going in Sydney. Um, I think Bernard's got the capabilities to beat all of the players. My question would be, can he do it over three to five sets, as I mentioned, and he can do it for seven matches. I know he can beat someone on the day, but can you do it through a whole tournament? And that's kind of the next progression for both he and Nick in terms of the evolution of their career. It's about not one win, it's about their entire tournament. And that's kind of the next thing for both of them. On the topic of uh, Nick Kyrgios, on the topic of Nick Kyrgios, there's a lot of talk about his attitude and on-court demeanor. How do you assess it? I think he's got, um, I think he's got a really engaging attitude. I think he's got a really engaging kind of, of temperament. The problem is when he crosses the line. And I think he's realizing now that he needs to monitor it to, to a point to where he can use it as positive reinforcement and not distraction. 
And I think most players take a little bit of time to do that. Unfortunately for Nick, he's doing it in front of a microscope and in front of a lot of cameras. And that makes it very difficult because the greater the expectation, the greater the magnifying glass. And, yeah. and I think that that's part and parcel with your responsibilities as a great player. But I love the energy he brings. I love the passion he has. I'd like to reel in some of the detrimental stuff. Yeah. But I think that that will happen in time. And, and it's a matter of him kind of sorting it out them, himself because everybody's personality is a little bit different. Hmm. And his is very different. But it can be very engaging and very fun yeah. when it's a little bit more constrained and there are a few more filters. And the yeah. fact that he draws the crowd. Absolutely. And he's great for the game in so many ways. And uh, you know the other ways that aren't so great for the game, you hope that maturity and experience will just kind of snuff those out. And I, I think, you know, as a coach, they have to be tempered a little bit for him to reach his potential. Not smothered, just tempered. And I think that he'll figure that way. Paul, are we going to see a number of happy track routes in the 2009 semifinal between Yao and Verdasco? Unbelievable that they're playing first round. And, and I'll be watching. And I, I, I'll be very surprised if that's not a long battle because they know each other so well. And uh, they're very comfortable. And, and uh, Fernando's not going to be afraid of Rafa. Rafa knows how difficult it will be. So I, I expect that's going to be a long match. Like getting back to Rafa, is it better for him to play? No, um, it's probably better for everybody not to play Novak. That would be my suggestion. But uh, I think 